Hey, what is going on, you beautiful war-torn camera geeks? This is Sam from CameraLegend.com, and I am back today for a real quick video. Uh, this video today is just real quick, man. It's about, um, on that last video that we did on the Bronica RF645, I had actually filmed a lot more information uh, that I had to eventually cut out uh, in the editing process because uh, YouTube limits me to about 15 minutes Per video I guess up until I get to a certain amount of subscribers so anyway uh, a lot of the information that I deleted was actually extraneous and this one is probably extraneous too but this one uh, I would say is for the true hardcore camera geek because this is really geeky kind of information and uh, I guess I'm a hardcore camera geek man because I was always very curious uh, as to what the level of involvement uh, Tamron had in uh, designing and building the Bronica RF645 and its lenses. All right. Uh, as you guys might know, Tamron took over Bronica in 1998. Then they shut down the company in 2005. All right. So uh, the Bronica RF645 was built under the ownership of Tamron. And as you guys uh, should know, Tamron is one of the great lens manufacturers of the world. They are known mostly as a third-party lens manufacturer, right? They're making lenses for Canon, Nikon, Pentax, Olympus, uh, Sony, most major mounts, you know? So anyway, I've always wondered if, if those lenses were actually uh, Tamron designs, Tamron built, uh, or were they Bronica? You know, like the way that when Sony took over Minolta, those early Sony cameras, like the Sony A100, uh, I would bet was actually a Minolta. Anyway, and looking online, I think they said that Tamron oversaw the project, but uh, they actually left the Bronica designers uh, there to do the project. So uh, I guess we could say that the lenses and the body was made by Bronica. Uh, but I was still wondering if there was actually some kind of uh, Tamron influence in there. And actually, the answer was pretty obvious, actually, right in front of my eyes, actually. And... The reason I kept thinking about this is because I've never saw anybody really talk about this. Uh, maybe it was just too geeky or something, but it was really a curiosity for me. So I'm going to share that with you guys now, my theory. And I'm not going to come back at the end of the video. So I want to wish you guys a great weekend. And thank you guys so much for watching. And until the next Big Camera Legend, and I will catch you guys next time on thecameralegend.com. And I actually don't have a camera ready for this. And I gotta go, so I'll be gentle on you guys today. YouTube channel. All right, well, as many of you may know, or if you don't know, uh, Bronica was uh, bought by Tamron around 1998. Uh, now, I've read somewhere online that said 1996, but most places seem to say 1998, all right? So, uh, if you're wondering where the Tamron influences are, I would probably say here and here and right about here the gold accents all right so just to show you what i mean here's my tamron uh a spherical uh 17 to 35 millimeter lens uh, as you can see the gold right there gold tamron ring right there so taking a look at the lens hoods you can see another great example of the Tamron Gold. CameraLegend.com